physical part of boxing is so minor that most people would never believe it or accept it. Because in my opinion, the mind and emotions are about 75% of boxing. Welcome to the Taoist Monologue, episode 23, was brought to you by the book, The Pandemic. How do I survive and make money? By N. Sadi, which is also available on, which is available on Amazon Kindle. Um, if you like this episode or our episodes, you're welcome to subscribe Uh our content is available on Spotify and all popular platforms, YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook. Just look for Daily Jewels or Daily Jewels TV on YouTube and you'll find us. Uh, DailyJewels.com um, is the website. Have a look at it with different types of content. And if you like this content, you're welcome to sub- subscribe to our Patreon page. Um, all our content, everything in martial arts is free. You're welcome to make a donation of $1. It helps the ship going. Now, today's subject is based on a, on a blog post which is found on dailyjuice.com. It's called Yang Shampoo's 10 Essences Decoded. Okay, so let's begin. Yang Shampoo summarized Tai Chi Chuan's classics with his 10 essences or essentials. Regardless of what Tai Chi Chuan style you do, Chen, Sun, or Wu, the 10 essences have a focus on the fundamentals, the first brick that builds the fortress, the result that is Tai Chi Chuan. On this, well, as I wrote, on this blog post, I will decode the 10 essences. The problem is translation. A lot of the books on internal martial arts or martial arts, when translated to English, do not really convey what is meant. Also, only the initiated practitioners through practice and self-discovery understand or begin to understand the words in the Ten Essences. Added to that, being guided by an authentic Shifu or Sifu master is important. Nonetheless, this post should assist the serious Tai Chi Chuan practitioner. Please kindly note it will not ease the pain of training all its frustrations that are essential for progress. It is simply a roadmap that you adhere and yield to as you walk the path. The first essence is the raising of the head or the first principle, the raising of the head. What is meant here? It means the head needs to be upright and centered. So the nape, the back of the neck needs to be straight, followed by the spine and head. There is a point an uh, acupoint at the crown of the head known as Ba Hui, which points to heaven, the cosmos of space. In other words, it points up. The important part that the nape, the important part is that the nape of the neck needs to be straight and not bending too forward or back. The joints there or are relaxed, holding to no tension. So you use your intent and not force. In other words, do not tense up. You feel it, you relax. You feel it relax when you straighten it. The logic here is allowing the lifting of the spirit or shen. Someone who is slumped up with the nape of the neck leaning too forward with the shoulders pointing too forward is indicating fatigue, a weak shen. And the opposite, the nape of the neck leaning too back followed by a chest that is out will indicate holding on to tension. This is usually followed by the lower back pointing out. And when somebody is standing like this, like a Marine, they usually experience tension on the lower back. Again, the main point is to make sure the nape of the neck is straight. The rest takes effect like a domino effect. Number two, releasing the tension in the shoulders and elbows. We hold on to tension fighting gravity sub- subconsciously without knowing it. And martial arts like Tai Chi Chuan indicate this to us. In the classics, the English translation will use the word sinking. This simply refers to the release of tension. The release of tension in the elbow joint will cause the elbows to be pointing down or to be rounded, allowing the shoulder to release the tension down and therefore allowing the nape of the neck to release tension as well. 
note when uh when we speak of relax in tai chi chuan it usually or it's usually the translation of the mandarin word sung which simply means letting go of tension in the joints by this it refers to ligament sinews and tendons they must not be willfully tensed tensing them tenses the muscles the opposite is what gives tai chi chuan practitioners the ability to redirect force by releasing by releasing one's own tension down with that of the opponent the more soon the more effective the fighter raising the back and sinking the chest there is that word again sinking now all that needs to be done is that the sternum or the center point between the chest chests need to or between the nipples needs to drop a few millimeters below simply by sighing gently one feels this but not too much just a slight drop this will then cause the upper back to slightly raise and be rounded. This allows the chi to sink below to the dantian, the acupoint a few centimeters below the navels. In other words, the tension held by the upper body goes down. In fighting one who's one who holds on to tension on the upper body versus one who has tension down onto the ground, the fighter with the tension held up added with the pumping adrenaline will be easily swept because the heels will be light he or she will have no root the joints in the waist and hips need to release tension to loosen the muscles and allow the hips and waist to turn this is number four so before that that was number three raising the back and sinking the chest number four the joints in the waist and hips need to release tension to loosen the muscles and allow the hips and waist to turn this allows the tension to drop all the way down to the legs and onto the ground or into the ground, which then causes an opposite reactionary force to rise. This is the motion or energy that flows from the feet and is released by the fingers or hands. From the turning of the waist and hips, one can understand full and empty weight distribution. Number five, the release of tension down will give a feeling of rooting or grounding and as one moves in the form or simply stands like in zan zhuang one will feel this rooting feeling the leg supports the upper body and with the turning the weight distribution changes any holding on to tension may cause imbalance also known as being double weighted connect the upper body with the lower body Adhering and yielding to the first five essences will allow this connection. The lower body governs the upper, so one must keep the intent on below and not on what is happening up top. Continuous momentum or motion. This is number seven. So connecting the upper body with the lower body is number six. Number seven, continuous momentum or motion. From the connection of the upper and lower when doing the form, the releasing of tension, i.e. sinking, generates the upward momentum, which is what generates the movement. Number eight, the unification of the mind intent with the body. With the practice of adhering to the essences, one will begin to slowly unify the mind and body. Again, number eight, the unification of the mind and intent with the body. So as you adhere to the essences, you'll be able to slowly unify the mind and the body. Use the mind and not physical force number nine. When you release the tension with your intent, your mind not using force. You, so when you release the tension with your intent, your mind, you're not using force. In the beginning, we, no, we notice that we tense up for various reasons, namely the fear of getting the form wrong it's part of the process. As you release the tension, i.e. let go, you begin to release, you begin to, so you begin to tense up less and therefore use minimum physical force. In other words, you do not tense up much. It's, so I'm going to reread that part again. It's part of the process. As you release the tension, i.e. let go, you begin to tense up less and therefore use minimum physical force. In other words, you do not tense up much. Number 10, stillness in motion and motion in stillness. Now, the stillness is the mind 
or intent that is releasing the tension held by the sinews, ligaments, and tendons and aim below onto the ground or earth, i.e. connecting with the earth or ground. You may have random thoughts while doing the form, but keeping it, the intent and mind down is the stillness or connected to the intent. In other words, uh, another way to say it, the stillness is the sinking and the motion is the reactionary force mentioned above earlier on that spirals up as the tension from above spirals down the sinking both stillness and motion generate each other the mind is still because it is only sinking down and not focused on the arm or the legs etc i mean it's not fixated as this is how tension builds up and with regards to the generated motion that draws up it's the it's released again with stillness sinking the stillness in motion thank you for tuning in on well thank you for tuning in episode 23 of the Taoist monologue yang shenfu's 10 essences decoding i'm still training i'm forever a student there most likely will be changes as I evolve in the practice and my understanding changes. This is my current understanding. If anybody has a difference in their interpretation, please let, him, let, let me know. Um, till the next episode.